Hi, Caleb with Brownells here. And in today's video, we're gonna be installing a bunch of Midwest Industries Alpha stuff onto the AK pattern of rifle. All right, so if you're not familiar with the Midwest Industries Alpha stuff, uh, we've done product spotlights on it in the past. It's basically just a bunch of accessories to modernize your AK. And the AK we're gonna be working on here uh, is an AK-74. Uh, this one's pretty old, actually. This is an old inner arms import. Uh, so step one of installing any of this stuff is gonna be to clear the firearm. All right, and then step two is uh, to actually repeat step one. All right, and we're gonna be first going through how to completely strip this thing and get it ready. So that's what we're gonna start with. Uh, but before that, I wanna go over just a few tools we're gonna be using. Uh, if you notice, I'm wearing a fancy leather apron today. This is, I've had this thing since I like first started gunsmithing many, many years ago, as you can tell from it being well-worn. Uh, so uh, we're gonna need, you know, that. You're gonna need some iPro because we're actually be gonna be using a Dremel tool and it's gonna like blow people's minds that, that gunsmiths, like real gunsmiths actually use, I say real, you know, whatever. Uh, we use Dremel tools. Now uh, we're gonna be using a file. So the hand guards and, you know, top covers and all that stuff. Uh, it comes with all the Allen wrenches and stuff you need, uh, but I'm just gonna be using the uh, Fix-It Sticks, you know, the Field Armor Kit, because it has everything in there. All right, so a really important tool I'm also gonna be using is this Midwest Industries block. So this actually works uh, with your AK. It works like a vice block, like an AR-15. Uh, so, like I said, this was a 74. Um, and there's two sides, one for a 47 and one for a 74, so 76239 or 54539. And we're using the 545. So you just lock it in there like you would a magazine. And now you can hold your AK in a vise. All right, so what we need to do at this point, we've already cleared the firearm. Uh, so now we just need to start taking stuff off of it. So let's do a field strip first. Pull off this dust cover. And we're actually gonna be replacing this, so we'll just set it aside. Recoil spring. And bolt. Just pull it straight back and lift up. And you can set that whole assembly aside. All right. So the fire, good news is like the fire control group and everything that uh, like that we can leave in there. We are gonna need to remove this grip, this stock, and our hand guard. So let's go ahead and take off our hand guards. You just rotate this tab up here. That'll let you lift up on your gas tube assembly here. Uh, so what we'll do at this point is remove the wood from the actual tube. And yeah, this one's easy. You just rotate 180 degrees like I did there, and it'll pull off of the bottom. Then you're left with just the tube. We'll set that aside, get rid of the wood. All right, now we need to remove this bottom portion. So I'll show you guys here. If you look, you'll notice a little tab in the front of this handguard ring, right? We're just gonna lift up on that tab and that's gonna allow this to move forward. And you may need a tool. Yeah, this one's pretty tight, so. I'll just, it shouldn't be too tight, so I should just be able to use the back of this file here. Wouldn't usually recommend uh, files for prying anything, but we're not really prying, we're just kinda using it to get in there. And there we go. So with that rotated forward, you can now push the whole thing forward and it'll do just like that. Then you can pull the wood off. All right, and we'll set the wood aside. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the stock and the grip. And let me open my tool kit here. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm gonna try to kind of timestamp everything. Um, that way everything will be nice and portioned out. I'll try to remember. If not, just yell at me in the comments and I'll try and get to it uh, quickly. 
All right, so we'll just set up a driver here. And let me show you the screw I'm going to be removing. I'm actually gonna be removing two screws. So this one in the rear right here, and this one in the front. Both of those need to come out. And it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm doing the rear first. I know you can't, you don't have the best view, but if you've taken out a screw before you, you know what I'm doing. And if your AK has uh, plastic furniture, it's, I, I forgot to mention this, uh, it's pretty much the same exact process. It's actually a little harder with wood because wood tends to swell over time. All right, so now we need to get this stock out of this receiver. And this can be tricky in a lot of cases because like I said, the wood will swell over time. And a lot of times it's actually pressed in. Uh, so. What I'm going to do is just, I'm going to give this a tug and we'll see if it comes out. If not, then we'll be a little bit more persuasive. All right, so we're going to need to be a little bit more persuasive. So as you can see here, I've got a pretty good view of the actual wood tang itself in there. And I'm going to come in with you know, a punch or, you know, anything I can, basically. Uh, what I don't want to do is stick a screwdriver in these slots and start trying to pry it out. Um, that's, that's not the way to do it. You're going to end up damaging the metal. You're going to damage the wood. Uh, and we're going to do a little bit of damage to the wood here whenever we hit it, but it's on the inside, so it's not that big of a deal. All right, so I'm going to grab a punch and a hammer, and we'll go from there. All right, so I'll just kind of rotate this here. To where you and me can see because I still I still need to see what I'm doing guys and that's coming out nice and easy just be careful not to hit the receiver rails with the hammer all right and as you can see we've made quite a bit of progress we should be able to just pull it out from here There we go. All right, now our stock is removed. All right, so now we just need to remove the grip. And I will say this, if your AK already has a um, 1913 rail on the back of it, or if you plan on keeping the 1913 or if you plan on keeping the wood or synthetic, you know, whatever stock you have on there, if you plan on keeping that, just leave it on there. You don't need to take it off. So the reason we're removing it is because we're going to be installing the alpha stock. Uh, you can install the top cover. You can install the handguard without installing the alpha stock. That's optional. Uh, but like I said, we're going to be installing all of the, uh, all of the stuff here. And that's an important step. All right. So to remove this grip, it's pretty straightforward. You see a screw on the bottom there. Uh, if you haven't already guessed it, we're going to need to take that screw out. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. I think I did that all the way, almost. There's a block on the inside of the screw uh, on the receiver that acts like a nut, and we just need to make sure that we're actually unscrewing from that, and that'll happen. All right, so this sits on the inside of the receiver, and it's threaded, and that's what that long screw actually threaded into. It's went in just like so, right? And then the receiver was sandwiched in between. All right, so we'll set this aside. We are gonna be putting that grip back on, but if you have another grip you wanna put on, uh, now's the chance to do it. So, 
All right. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do now, the first thing we're gonna install is this 1913 adapter, okay? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna go into the back of the receiver and it's gonna allow our receiver to take 1913 style stocks. So uh, like the Midwest Industries Alpha stock. Now, if you wanna do any other 1913 stock, now's the chance to do it. You can use this adapter. Uh, it doesn't have to be the Alpha stock, but like I said before, that's the one we're gonna be using here. Okay, so obviously we have a bit of an issue here. This tang for the wooden stock and for plastic stocks, uh, it's in the way. And if you're looking at it, trying to figure out what you need to do to remove it, it's built into this entire rear trunnion. So these two rivets, right, that go through, they are holding this thing in place. The easiest way to get rid of this thing is to just cut off the tail. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna cut off the tail so that this block can fit flush and be installed onto the receiver. Now, this is important. Only do this if you want to change the stock. You don't need to do this for any of the other components, okay? And once you do this, you can't undo it without riveting a new trunnion into the receiver. So once we cut it off, that's it, it's cut off. All right, so let me, I'm trying to position this so that you guys can see it and I can see it because I'm gonna need to really see what I'm cutting here. Now, whenever we cut, we're gonna cut everything past the back of this receiver off. So we wanna cut this thing off and file it flush so that everything's nice and flat, okay? That's what we're doing here. All right, and in order to do that, we're gonna be using a Dremel tool. So the Dremel tool we have here, actually I brought my personal one from home because I love this one in particular. Uh, this is a Dremel 4000 with the extension on it. Uh, I have the extension on it because usually like I have mine hanging above my workbench and I just use the handle for stuff. Um, I like using this more than you know holding this whole thing because you can be a little bit more uh, surgical, Sur surgical the word here, we'll use that word. Well, you can be a little bit more surgical holding this smaller tool here. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just crank this thing all the way open. I'm gonna hang it from the vise. Now, you're gonna need a cutoff wheel for your Dremel. And I have my handy dandy Dremel kit here. I'm just gonna take off the one that's on here. And I already, look at that, I've been doing some cutting off in the past here. So we're just gonna hook that guy up. And I'm actually gonna go ahead, and for this video, I'm just gonna put a fresh wheel on there. We'll just lock that on, just like that. All right, so this step, you will need some sort of eye protection. And I just have some generic stuff I grabbed out of our range bag here. All right, so we'll throw these on. All right, now when we cut, I don't wanna try and take off everything all at once and get right against the receiver. I wanna leave a little bit of meat there and then file down to finish. This is where this is where all the Dremel tool memes come from, okay? It's people just going way too far. Uh, a Dremel tool is either gonna make your project really easy or it's gonna make it really freaking hard. And those guys that try and take off too much at once, that's, that's when things get difficult. Okay. Let me make sure I'm gonna be in a good position here. Yeah, this will work. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in halfway on this side, then I'm gonna come in halfway from the other side. And we'll turn it on.
All right, so we have successfully removed the tail from that rear trunnion, that whole tang there. All right, so at this point, yeah, so typically at this point, and you can also, if you don't have a Dremel tool, you can use a hacksaw, just hacksaw that sucker off and come in with your file and make it nice and flat. So what I would typically do at this point, or what I would typically recommend at this point, is to just finish with a file. Um, but just to kind of speed this process up a little more, I'm gonna come in with this grinding wheel here. I'm gonna remove a lot of this material, then finish with a file. All right, so here we go. All right, and I'm just gonna get my Dremel tool out the way here. And we'll finish up with a file. and we'll take our file. And remember, files only cut in one direction. If you go back and forth, uh, you're gonna dull the heck out of your file. And you can see that with the Dremel wheel, we couldn't really tell, uh, but we removed a lot more of the top than we did the bottom, which is why it's important to always finish with the file because this will th this, is the, this is the pro tip. Uh, Dremel tool work, it's pretty obvious that it was Dremel tool work unless you finish it with some sort of hand cutting device like a file here. So when we're done with this file, you're gonna look at it and you're gonna be like, man, that didn't even look like it was cut with a Dremel tool. And that's what we're going for. I feel like we could probably just do a whole video on filing by itself. It's just a, it's one of those things. It's, it's, it's basic gunsmithing, but it's, it's something that a lot of people get wrong usually. Um, I say a lot of people, you know, people who know what they're doing obviously don't get it wrong, but if it's your first time picking up a file, um, you, you may be on the struggle bus and that's okay. We're getting pretty close. And filing, you know, I could make a bunch of like Bob Ross references and like uh, there's no mistakes, only happy little accidents. But when you're filing, there's definitely mistakes. It's no, no happy little accidents. If you make a little accident, you're not gonna be happy. And we're just gonna change directions here to finish it off. And as you're filing, you'll be able to see the high spots, uh, especially once you change directions. I was going this way. I got all of my Dremel wheel marks out. That was pretty easy. I could see those disappearing with every stroke. Uh, then when I removed most of the material going this way, I changed directions and you can see the filing marks change as well, and you can see how much you need to take off. It's it's uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward. It's just filing itself is more of a it's not it's something that's hard to teach without you know you actually having your hands on one. It's one of those things you pick up by doing. All right, let's just do a test fit here. We're going to take it out the vise. All 
All right, you can see there's still a bit of a gap at the top here. And we're just gonna go a little bit further to take that out. I can see the high spot. So I'll do another test fit here and that looks pretty good. Now another thing to look for is you see there's that hole that's in your trunnion and then there's a hole in top of this adapter, right? We need to make sure that those holes line up as well. So I removed all the material from where this tail was, right? And in some cases you may have to just square up the back of this to get this to fit properly. Uh, we didn't have to do that here. This was already pretty square, so we're good to go. Uh, and you would just do that with the file. So, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm covered in, in metal dust and so is this. So I'm gonna clean up real quick and we'll be right back and I'll show you how to continue installing this. All right, so what I did at this point, I just uh, blew, used, used some compressed air, blew all those metal shavings out. Uh, there's still a little bit more in there, but you just need to make sure that you get some some air, you know, whatever you need to do, um, you know, gun scrub or whatever, and just get all of these little uh, metal shavings out of here. Uh, get them all out of your chamber and everything like that, because as you were filing, they were just falling down in there. And I don't think I mentioned this before, but when you're filing, uh, especially something flat like this, always try and put the workpiece uh, vertical like this here so you have a horizontal plane to file on because if you have this thing sideways and you're trying to file on it you're going to end up going way too far this way this way you know whatever uh, that's the easiest way to do it so that's how we did it and lo and behold it doesn't look like somebody went after it with a dremel tool even though we did and that's what we're going for so mission accomplished there all right so the rest of the installation process will uh Put this back in here, like so. I'll turn it so you can see it. All right. So this back piece here, all right, it's gonna come with the back piece. It's gonna come with the screw to go down the top. And it's gonna come with these two tension blocks, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to find the appropriate sized hex here. That is a 5 64ths, and it does come with a small Allen wrench, but as I mentioned before, we are using our tools here. And another important thing is we kept our coffee far away from all the metal dust and stuff. So if you have coffee, tea, um, white claw, you know, whatever, not, not that you should be drinking, working on your bench here. Don't mix, you know, gunsmithing and alcohol ever. Okay, now we'll take this tool, throw this back in here real quick. All right, so these tension blocks, if you see the cutout here, you're gonna put one in this side, one in the other side, then you were going to, let me turn this here so you can see. We're going to slide this in partially so that the tension blocks are in the receiver, but the screws are not. So now we can tighten this screw so that the tension block is pressing against the receiver. We'll do the same thing on the other side here so that this is going to try and slide into this receiver nice and tight. And it should be tight enough that you should need a you should need to tap it in. You shouldn't be able to push it in the rest of the way. So we'll just use our nylon end of our hammer here and tap it in. And that goes in nice and tight. All right. And then let's do a test fit on our top screw. 
changing wrench sizes. Top screw goes in. Yep, so that, that fits. All right, so before I go in the rest of the way, since I know it fits, I'm gonna use some of this Vibratite. Not to be confused with Loctite. We're not using Loctite this part. And you guys know how I like to do this here. I do this for everything. I'll just cut the package open. Spill a puddle of it on the table. Dip our screw. And go in with it. snug that up there so this screw here we can go ahead and apply some actual torque to all right and we will go we're gonna go for I'm doing this one to 35 inch pounds and I feel like that's pretty good so Probably get away with 30 to 35. Set those tools down. Let me get the rest of my Dremel stuff kind of just out of the way here. Okay, and that's it. We've installed a 1913 adapter uh, to the back of our receiver. Now, we can go ahead, take our grip and this block and reinstall it into the receiver. So, all right. If you look at this block, let me come over here with it. If you look at this block, you'll notice that there's an angle. So you're gonna wanna put this block in the receiver so that the angle, and I'll show you here, the angle makes the bottom of this block stick away from your, your, your trigger guard, right? Because that's the angle that this screw comes in at. Easy enough. All right, so we'll just kind of position this in place here. Keep a finger on the inside of it. And if you do this just right, you can get it started by hand before you have to take a tool to it here. There we go. And we'll just snug that up. And again, like I said, you know, that's pretty much the process for any replacement group. So if you take a look at the Midwest Industries stuff here, uh, for example, these are the hand guards. We have a six inch hand guard and then the 10 inch hand guard. We're gonna be working with the 10 inch, but the process for both are exactly the same, right? And you can install just the handguard and keep everything else stock if you wanted to. Uh, but like I said before, we're gonna be doing everything. All right, so we decided we're gonna go with this 10 inch handguard, okay? Now, we have another decision to make. Are we going to install the rail dust cover, which does require the handguard? If you know we end up not installing this, but installing let's say, um, one of these covers, which will allow us to keep our stock dust cover. Uh, but let me turn them around the correct way here. 
which these do also require the handguard. We can either do a 1913 rail on the back, or we can do the aim point mount on the back. It all depends on kind of what you want to go with. So for this procedure, we're going to be installing the full back rail. And the process for installing one of these versus the back rail is pretty similar. Um, and once I get the handguard on, I'll go through the installation process for both of these. So obviously, since I said that, we're going to need to install the handguard first because these other parts do require the handguard. All right. So the handguard, let me make a little work area here. All right, so the handguard's made up of a few components. You have a top piece and a bottom piece. When you get it, it's gonna be assembled. But what we're gonna need to do is disassemble it. That'll work. And to disassemble it, you just need to remove these uh, screws on the side that separate the top from the bottom. All right, and the last screw here. So you're gonna have three screws on each side for the 10 inch handguard, or two screws on each side for the six inch. All right, here's our top cover. We can set that aside for now. We're not gonna need it. All right, now we have our bottom piece here. So. If you notice, there's a sling mount on this, uh, this bracket here, and fear not because this uh, handguard is relieved for it. Uh, a lot of other you know, companies' handguards, you actually had to cut that off, um, which was not ideal. Uh, but here, we don't have to. We're, we're done with the Dremel. Okay, so depending on your AK, you're gonna need to do some fitting on this part, okay? So we have these tension screws on the bottom. I'm just gonna go ahead and Kind of get those out of the way. What I'm saying is we may not be done with the file just yet. So notice these studs on the back here, right? This this tenon or tang, right? This tenon, we'll call it a tenon. That fits inside. That's gonna fit inside this slot on the bottom of your receiver. Now Typically, so Midwest Industries makes them a little oversized because that's, you definitely don't want them undersized. So you may have to fit them down a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll actually slide this piece back to where it was and lock it in place so that it, it doesn't go anywhere, right? And then from here, we're just gonna do a test fit. Kind of let this float just a little. And push back on it. And yeah, this is, the tenon on here is much larger, which it should be, we're expecting that. All right, so what we need to do is determine how much larger and where. And the way I kind of like to determine that, or an easy way to do it, is to set your handguard where it should be and just give the front of it a light tap here. And usually, in this case it did, you it may be hard to see on camera here, but it left a little bit of an indention, a little bit of wear marks here where it was oversized. All right, so that gives us a pretty good idea. So again, what we're gonna do, we're gonna come in with this file and we're gonna remove material so we're either gonna be removing from the sides, bottom or top. Uh, typically, you can get away with just doing the top here and then we'll check the fit. All right, now, another thing about filing is never file greasy parts. So we're gonna go ahead and just degrease this real quick and uh, get to the filing. All right, so we just hit that with a little bit of gun scrubber, got it degreased and uh, we're good to go now. All right, so what I'm gonna do I can still see those marks. All right, I'll just grab this in the vise here. And you can use padded vise jaws, of course. These vise, 
These vice jaws are nice and smooth, so I'm not too worried about that. And actually, we'll file the top first. I'm just gonna take my file. Now this is aluminum. It's gonna cut a lot easier than that steel, especially once you get through that anodizing. Uh, and what I like to do here, if you notice, this file has a flat edge, but that doesn't cut at all. It's just a flat piece of metal. Um, and this side does cut, okay? This is where you want to be careful. You want to put the flat edge against the handguard, because if I use this edge, I'm going to be cutting into the handguard as well, uh, where I don't need to be, and we don't want to do that. So, be aware. And there's going to be a lot of uh, cut and check on this part. And I'm just going to go nice, nice and slow. I'm going to take my time with the cutting and everything. Don't rush it. And how much you need to remove is going to depend entirely on your AK. There's no set amount. If there was a set amount, they would have made it pre-fit to that. So everyone's going to be different. All right. Rinse and repeat. All right, now I think I'm pretty close on the height. Now I'm going to play with the width a little bit. This is where it gets kind of tricky. We're going to need to remove a little bit from this side and try to remove an equal amount from this side. You can use a caliper, measure, compare, um, remove a little, or measure before, remove a little bit, and then measure the other side and go from there. And let's see, we're going to be cutting this way. And it's going to feel like it's not doing any cutting at all. Uh, it's going to feel like it's almost sliding across until you get through that anodizing. Then you'll feel it start cutting real good. And you want to go nice and slow with this because you don't want to overcut it. You want to get the most solid handguard mount possible. And that's why you have to do it manually. Okay. Let's see what we got here. All right, so I can actually force it in by hand if I pushed real hard. Um, so we're gonna go with that. Again, you can use compressed air, whatever. You don't have to do like me and like blow on it like a weirdo. Uh, typically I would have an air choke over my workbench where I just did everything there. Um, all right, so I mentioned I could force it in before, so we're gonna go ahead and actually force it in. Nice and snug. You don't wanna, you, you could probably get it tight enough to where you couldn't force it in, but could hammer it in. I, I don't typically like to do that because you wanna be able to remove this handguard by hand if you need to. All right, so we'll just push in here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. And for that just last little bit, I'll give it a tap. We forced it in 90% uh, of the way by hand, which is good. Yeah, that looks great. We'll just give it another. All right. 
There we go. That looks good. Okay, so. Let me get this back in here. Now we're gonna fit this ring here and I'll show you here in just a second what we're doing. This one's not really gonna require any fitting. So what we'll do is I'll take it off and show you. Again, like I said, we wanna be able to remove it by hand, which we could, that's great. All right, now if you look right here, this piece, this is what this ring here is gonna slide over. Um, if you need to remove it to do any fitting, which this piece you typically shouldn't have to, but you may have to, and I'm gonna tell you how to do it. You remove these two screws on the bottom here. This piece will come out, okay? You'll just be able to slide it and pull it out. And you can see, hopefully you can see, right there on that corner, that's a, uh, that's the wear mark of where I was pushing this on. So you may have to remove a little bit of material there. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna tap it on. It's gonna slide right on and we're not gonna worry about it. Yours may very well do that. Hopefully yours does that. If not, you fit it the same way we fit the back end. Nice and easy. I use the hammer to put it on that time because I already know we can do it by hand if we try, so that's no big deal. All right, now that rings back. We just rotate that tab, same one we use for the takedown, and push it back. All right, so at this point, you'll see there are two screws in there, one on each side, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those screws out, put a little bit of Vibratite on them, and put them back in. All right, but for this process, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tighten them down. All right, and for this, it does come with a ball end wrench. Now I'm just gonna snug each one up. And what this is doing, it's pushing tension against that ring mount, right? And it's pushing the receiver, or it's pushing the handguard back into the receiver to make a just a really solid handguard mount. So when you mount your lights, lasers, sights, whatever on here, uh, you don't have to worry about your uh, point of impact shifting. A lot of, a lot of uh, especially AK handguards, there's a lot of them out there that just on as sturdy as you want them to be. All right, so now that that's on, what we would do is flip it over and get this out the way. As you can see, there's another tension screw here and here. So we'll put a little bit of Vibratite on those. Again, I'm just gonna skip that for video sake here. Um, just dip it in the Vibratite and screw them down. And when we do that, I'll switch the appropriate tools here and I'll grab this like so so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here
And you just want to snug these screws up. You don't want to do anything crazy. Especially with this front one here. And I'll, I'll show you. So this one is actually going to be pushing against that barrel. So you want to snug it up. The rear one, snug it up. They should definitely be sitting... This back one is sitting flush with the surface of the handguard, which is fine. And this front one is just below the surface. Um, if they're sitting higher than that, then you definitely you have an issue. You don't want that. So again, we snugged it up. All right, and that looks pretty darn good. All right, and a thing to be careful of, the reason you don't want to over tighten this rear screw is because it's actually pushing against the barrel, okay? So you don't want to put any extra tension against the barrel. It's just, it's supposed to sit nice and snug against it um, to provide a nice, you know, stable platform. Okay, so now I'll put this back in here. AK-74, that is this one. Okay, so now our AK gas tube, we'll just slide that on, cams on the front, lift this piece up here, it, this goes on the exact opposite of how it came off, go figure. Alright, and then you just rotate the tab down, lock it back in place, and boom, okay. Now the top piece, notice there is a relief cut for that ring, so we'll just come down like so all right and then you just you know there's a little movement there um, you just line up your holes and install these screws one at a time okay and what we will do is find where we put the tool found it and I'll install this front one here again vibra tight and 30 inch pounds okay I'm doing 30 inch pounds on these. Then I'll come to the opposite side in the back. 30 inch pounds. Swap sides again. And say it with me, 30 inch pounds, all right. And this installation process for the uh, six inch handguard is exactly the same. You just have two less screws. There we go. And that is the uh, Midwest Industries Alpha Handguard installed, okay? So now, as I mentioned before, you need to decide if you want to go with one of these optic mounts uh, or if you want to go with the uh, rail top cover, because you can't use both at the same time. Okay, so regardless of if you're installing one of these or the rail top cover, I'll just go through these real quick. Uh, what you're gonna do, they come fully assembled, okay? We're going to remove one side. So you have left side, right side, then you have the optic platform. This process is exactly the same for if you're using the aim point one. Uh, so we'll just use this one here. Okay. So these back screws are torque screws. And all you need to do is remove one side of this, doesn't matter which side. And as you can see, that came right off. And you have M-lock screws here, right? On each side. These M-lock screws are actually gonna lock into your handguard. 
And then these bottom screws here will also screw into the handguard. Uh, so this mount is actually relying on the rigidity of the handguard, which is a good thing. All right. So with one side removed. All right. So what we're going to do here, actually, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. You do need to remove these two bottom screws as well. And you'll see why in just a moment. And I will remove this one. Okay, so I'm going to take this bar and these two screws that I pulled out here. I'm going to slide it under that handguard. I'm going to use something to kind of help get that heat shield out the way. There we go. And I'm, I'm trying to look while you guys are looking. All right, so there you go. You just line up the holes, install your screws. Again, you know, Vibratite or Loctite or, I'd use a Vibratite for this one here. We'll tighten those down. Alright, and on those there, I go 20 inch pounds will do. Okay, now align your M lock screws. Alright. And just lay this over the bar. Put your M lock screws into this first slot here. All right, and you can see that looks nice. We'll just snug up our M-lock screws. These M-lock screws install the same way any other M-lock screw on the planet does. So we'll install those. Okay, and then the two smaller screws that I almost just forgot right in front of you. Excuse me, one smaller screw because we're doing that top piece now. And this is why we just snugged up those M lock screws here. We, we'll leave them loose. All right. That way everything can align. We'll snug up that side. Those are all nice and snug, not tight, snug. All right, now we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. All right, so here we go. Okay, now we're gonna take this piece and slide it on. Now again, M lock screws, we're gonna line up with that metal bar, right? And then these two just mount back up to the pick rail. That's it. All right, and there you have it. So like I said, same thing for the aim point mount. Now you can put, you know, red dot sight, whatever. Uh, keep your traditional dust cover on there and you're good to go. You have a rear optic mount and you can still remove your dust cover for maintenance and stuff like that, uh, which is super convenient. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and we'll jump right into that rail dust cover. All right, so from here, we're gonna install, or I'm gonna show you how to install the railed top cover. All right, so what we're gonna need to do now, uh, this is gonna install very similar to the same way the other parts did. 
uh, we're gonna M lock and we're gonna use that metal bar to lock in. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do what we need to do. So we'll remove one side of it. So pick a side. I'm gonna go ahead and take off that metal bar here real quick and then we can step up. All right, so we'll remove that screw. So we're gonna install this with this side still on, but you will need to remove these screws, put Vibratite on them, then torque everything down because they're just, they're just, they're installed loose from the factory. Okay, so your rail top cover. So the top cover is gonna be back here. You can see that it's pretty easy here. Okay, all right, so now we'll just remove the bar screw. And we'll go ahead and put both of these metal bars in. And I'm just going to go ahead and do them both at the same time before we install anything else. All right, so slides in under the handguard, in between the handguard and the heat shield. And I'll come on your guys' side so I can see here. All right. All right, so we'll tighten those down now and we'll do the same thing with the other one. All right, and we'll just snug those up because we're gonna take them out again and put the Vibratite on and torque them down. Okay. Now, we're gonna install one side and I'll just kinda, there's no really good way for you to see this side, so I'm gonna pull off both sides just to, that's gonna make it easier. All right, so we have both of our sides pulled off. All right, so we'll install them one at a time. Metal bar goes into the cut, M-lock slots, or M-lock screws, and nuts go into the M-lock slot. So just line up your M-lock and that metal bar will fall where it needs to be. And the M-lock I'm not putting any real torque on it at all. I'm just snugging them up in place. Don't tighten them yet because if you tighten them you're not going to be able to get this screw lined up correctly. There we go. Okay now I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side. All right, now we have our support bars in place. All right, so now you are left with the actual dust cover, right? And then this metal piece here. Uh, be careful, because this pin, without these bars blocking it, it will fall out. We'll just leave that there. And we're gonna slide this cut into this cut here. So this, this lip is gonna go into this cut right underneath your right underneath your rear sight. So we'll slide. And push forward. And everything's in place. 
So now we'll just take our screws here. And at this point, you can actually go ahead and put these screws in with FiberTite at, we're gonna do 30 inch pounds, okay? And then once you have these two screws in, all right, so we'll install that. And you can use, let's see, Loctite on those. These are the larger ones. And take every other screw out now, all the screws that you just installed, minus the M-Lock screws. I wouldn't worry about the M-Lock screws. Leave the M-Lock screws in, but all of these other screws, so the screws for the metal bars, pull those out, um, put Vibratite on them, then put them back in at 20 inch pounds, okay? And then you're good to go. Now. Last step for this rail top cover, it comes with this recoil spring guide, okay? You're gonna need to swap out your existing one. The way we do this, so this is the AK spring, right? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna push this spring down, push down, get a good hold of it here. All right, so, you can see how it kind of unclips there. So what we're gonna do is take off the retainer. These bars just clip around that retainer. Then we'll undo this piece here, slides off. And there's our recoil spring. All right, we'll take our factory guide rod here. And here's the tricky part. Okay, I'm gonna push up my sleeves a little more. We're going to slide the spring over. Now we're going to need to depress this really far. Another good thing about the leather apron here, I'll use a rag to kind of cut myself out. All right, now we're gonna take the factory rod, hook it on, right? And it's gonna need to kind of face on like this. So what we're gonna need to do Hook that on, then we're going to take the retainer. There's holes in the retainer, and the end of the clip just clips onto those holes like that. And that holds your recoil spring in place. All right, so this new piece was needed for this dust cover to make sure it locks in as tight as it needs to. Now we can take our AK bolt assembly. We'll just install this here. All right. In the rearward position, push down and forward. All right, now you can take your new recoil spring guide rod assembly, push it in. Now, you're gonna push in and down. It's gonna notch in. So once that's in place, just close the top cover, hinge it down, and it'll close shut. That'll come through there. And you notice it's there's a little bit of play in it. All right, so what you need to do Every time you close this top cover from here on out, uh, you need to cycle the action twice. And that bevel has keyed in and now this thing is, I mean the gun's moving in the vise, but this thing is rock solid. So now you have a return to zero top cover mount. All right, all that's left now is to just throw the alpha stock on and we're done. All right, so we take the alpha stock and this comes in a few different variants. Uh, this one is the adjustable. Uh, it comes with a folding mechanism as well. You can get, this is the non-folding. You can get it in a folder. Uh, you can also get it as an AR tube type setup. It doesn't look like an AR tube. It's, it's skeletonized. Um, you know what? I'll install this one, then I'll show you one of those. All right, so the alpha stock mounts on any 1913 back piece. Doesn't have to be this. All right, so we'll just remove the through bolt, slide it onto the rail. And we just tighten it down. Now this is usually something I'll torque down to um, you know, 25, 30 inch pounds and that'll work just fine. Okay, so with this setup, 
like I said before, uh, it, so, well, like I said before, it's available in a folding or non-folding one. This cheek riser, you just loosen these screws here, or actually, I'll just, I'll just take it off here and show you. All right, so with the cheek riser, uh, this is set up for a right-handed shooter. You just flip it over, it works just fine for a left-handed shooter, no problem there. Uh, you can adjust the height of the stock. Um, this one, like I mentioned before, is the fixed. And let me, uh, let me show you the M4 version of this as well. All right, so this is the M4 version of the Alpha stock. Like I said, it's just a skeletonized one that you fit any standard M4 stock on. This one has the folding mechanism. So like I said before, again, do, I mean, do a shot or something every time I say this. This Alpha one is available with this exact folding mechanism. You can switch it to where it folds to the left or folds to the right, however you want to set it up. All right, so all I got to say from here is uh, congratulations. You just converted your AK to an Midwest Industries Alpha AK. All right, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. And if you have any experience with this, uh, let everyone else know how awesome it is. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.